we are going to create the Apple AirPods in Blender. If you watch this tutorial and you do as I say, you're going to be able to visualize any product on earth and make a bunch of money by doing this for your clients. First of all, let's prepare some reference images. We can use this as a background image to tell us the rough size and proportions of this earbud. So we're gonna open that, right click, save image as. I'm in a new folder just for this project. This is where I'm going to save all the other references, all the textures and everything else that I'm gonna need for this. This is where I'm going to save this background image. Then go to Google and search for pure ref. Click on download, figure out how to download this thing. And when you run that program, now you got a little canvas over here where you can drag and drop images from other windows. And if you go to right click mode, always on top, then this is always going to stay visible on top of any other window and you can look at this as you're working in blender these people better start paying me i mention them in every video i make we're gonna drag and drop a few more images from this amazon page but i'm going to copy the name of the product paste it into google search and i want to get some more images of the inside of the case i can also use this as a different angle and i don't feel like searching for this any further this is the closest i can get to seeing the inside of the hole here so we're gonna drag and drop this image and now in blender we're going to place this little window into this corner so it's not bothering us as we're working now to load the reference image for the background go to top view shift a image reference open up your background image we're gonna give that a little bit of transparency and just throw that in the background I'm going to start by deleting the default cube. Now add a cube, and we're going to use that cube to shape out the ball part of this earbud. So W subdivide, give me a subdivision surface modifier with control two, and let's rotate this image like this so that this top part is better aligned with the axis here, and it's going to be easier to shape this. Now we're going to align this geometry with the image in the background. Push this forwards, scale this up on the Y axis, lift this up a little bit, pull this a bit further back. And I don't know if these are supposed to be perfectly symmetrical, but I think this looks pretty good. Now let's look at this from another angle like this it looks like we have to take the surfaces at the top and the bottom I'm going to scale those down like this and then bring them closer together by scaling this down on the z-axis we're going to take these corner vertices at the top and the bottom scale those down on the z-axis then take the vertices in between like this scale them down just a little bit but not as much as the corners now this is roughly the shape that we're looking for here you can adjust this a little bit further if you want to i think this looks pretty good now one thing that we have to keep in mind is that we have a circular hole here in the front but it's not exactly in the front over here it's rather something like this so we're gonna have to keep that in mind while we're creating this mesh because that might dramatically change the shape of the headphone as you can see now that we created this hole this part here looks a lot wider which means we would have to push everything backwards like this you might have to drop this down you might have to pull this backwards as well and slide some of these vertices around just to get a better shape here in the front we're going to leave this be for now i just wanted to prepare the geometry so we have it ready for later but we got to take care of this part sticking out down here to do that we're gonna have to use some geometry from this side over here and we're gonna have to figure out a way to extrude this out so that we can make that shit down there but we got to be careful not to fuck everything up so i think it's best to take this surface right here inset with eye check edge rail slide some of these vertices around to make this shape a little bit more round and soft you might have to move this up a bit and now this shape should allow us to extrude this stick down here now it looks like we have to extrude this outward slightly like this then scale it down on the y-axis extrude it out again but right click and pull it down on the y-axis scale it down further on the y-axis or make it completely flat also scale it down on the x-axis and we have to turn this into a circle so let's take this vertex right here give me loop tool circle bring it in the middle now this is a circle so we can bring this shape all the way down here this is gonna have to be a lot thicker which means this is gonna have to be thicker as well which also means this is gonna have to be thicker that means we gotta slide this away a little bit move this out of the way and we can't have this vertex sticking inwards like this so we're gonna have to do something about that slide this down with double g then slide this with double g and then we can pull this one down here with double g as well and now this edge loop is a little bit more round let's also try to fix it up down here at the bottom a little bit and hopefully we can do that without completely fucking up the rest of this shape Let's select this edge loop at the end here. Press N to open up this menu. Set the mean crease value to 1. That's going to make this sharp so that we can get a better idea of what this looks like. Scale this down a little bit. Give me a loop cut and bring it to the front here. We're going to have to lower this down a bit. And this is not supposed to go upwards like this. So we're going to have to take all of this and all of this. And we're going to have to lower this down a little bit. Then slide all this backwards a little bit. Give me these three edges at the bottom here. Slide them with double G. Select this one. Alt S. I'm just trying to prevent pinching down here at the bottom. We can also 
lower this down a bit. And after we fuck around with this shape for a little bit, we get quite close to the result that we want. But you're still gonna have to spend a little bit of time messing with the geometry here. Make sure to keep your topology clean. If your topology ain't clean, you gotta watch more Thomas Cullen videos. And it looks like we fucked up up here because we should have this hole on the other side. So let's fill this, select these edges, slide them out with double G, merge by distance, lift this up and lift this up. And now we're gonna take these two faces from down here, inset them, and we gotta figure out a way to rearrange this so that the hole has a better shape. So try moving some of these vertices around a little bit. Maybe you gotta lift this up a little bit or lower this down a little bit. Pull this over here. Let's try insetting again. X delete faces. Slide this backwards. Slide this down as well. 3D cursor over here. 3D cursor's pivot point. Select these vertices and scale them down towards the cursor and something like this should do it. And now let's just double check the shape from top view to make sure we didn't mess it up too much. We might gotta adjust a couple of vertices. And before you know it, we got a pretty good rough shape for this earbud. So let's duplicate this, apply one level of subdivision surface, and that's going to give us a bit more geometry to work with here. Now we can make some finer adjustments to the shape. For example, we have this dent here which makes it look quite ugly. And it becomes more obvious if you use a shiny matte cap. So we're gonna have to try to rearrange this geometry here, and hopefully that's going to fix the problem. So let's try a knife cut right here. On another knife cut over here and also give me one from here to here now we should be able to dissolve these we still got quads only we just have to push this out a little bit with alt s and that looks much better i'm probably gonna have to do the same thing on some other places but i'm not gonna show you that three times so let's move on to something cooler let's take this hole right here fill inset with i alt s to deflate this a little bit and push it inwards then extrude inwards and delete the face at the bottom let's see if we can do a nice grid fill in this hole face grid fill it ain't too bad at all. So deselect these, control B to bevel this part, uncheck loop slide, shape one, two segments, or maybe it would be a better idea to select this edge loop in the corner, V to tear it, scale it up a little bit, select this inner edge loop here and get rid of that. And in that case, we also don't need this one so we can get rid of that. This surface at the bottom is gonna have a different texture. Let's go W, loop tools, flatten, and we probably should have done this earlier so we don't get this curve here. So let's undo a couple of steps. Now select the grid field surface, loop tools, flatten, P to separate the surface, scale it up a little bit, and now join it back. That's what I'm talking about. It looks like this hole is supposed to be a little bit more straight. It's not supposed to be a round cutout. I don't feel like dealing with that right now. If you want to fix it, you can fix it. For me, this is good enough. Select this surface at the bottom here. Get rid of the mean crease. Deselect this and give me a bevel instead. And then we're going to select these two edge loops. As you can see over here, we got to exclude a little segment like this. I to inset. Slide this down a little bit. And also this part here. Select this entire surface. Extrude, right click, Alt S. We're going to slightly and inflate this, inset with I, and slide this outer edge loop a little bit, then give me this bottom edge loop, control B to bevel it, make sure that loop slide is unchecked here, we're going to take this little segment, extrude right click alt S to push it inwards, and delete the faces at the bottom, and now we can start adding the smaller details like these holes over here. Now we have to cut a hole right here, but the geometry here does not allow us to inset an area like this. I really don't want to use a boolean modifier, so here's what I'll do instead. I'm going to try to move this geometry out of the way and rearrange some of the vertices up here so that I have a surface which will better allow me to create this shape. And to do that in a clean way, we're going to use our loop tools. Edit, references, add-ons, type in loop, check this fucking box right here, select this loop, go to loop tools, G stretch, set that to spread, and you're going to use the influence slider to prevent this from going all the way. I only want it to go about this far. That way I'm still keeping a decent curvature, but I'm slowly moving this geometry out of the way. Then I'll do the same thing over here. We can take this one a little bit further, and then I'll select this edge loop, including this edge down here, loop tools, G stretch, crank the influence up a little bit more so we get this part out of the way, and we might have to slide a few more vertices manually like this. We're also going to select this one, loop tools, G stretch, just to make these edges here a little bit more balanced. Then we're going to select this entire surface. In edge select mode, we're going to deselect these edges, loop tools, space, and now we can select this surface, inset with I, check edge rail, and now we're going to make a knife cut from here to here. That's going to be aligned with the side of this hole like this. Slide these vertices in, bring this one closer, and let's see what happens when we delete this surface now. We almost got the right shape, we just got to make some minor adjustments. We gotta move this away so that we can move this over here. Slide this one this way, slide this one up, 
and before you know it, we got a nice clean hole and now we can extrude this inwards bevel this and later we're going to create this little grid on the inside before we do that we're going to do the same shit to create this other hole that's going to be a little bit easier because our geometry is a little bit better here so we're going to select this surface inset with i slide this up a little bit and slide this down delete this double g to slide these and also slide these and there we got another hole fill extrude inwards you can delete this face bevel this good to go we might have to make some minor adjustments to prevent this pinching here and we can fix that by just sliding around some of the surrounding geometry you might have to use alt s to inflate or deflate something here and there but now let's make this final little hole down here it looks like this metal ring should be up here on top but whatever we'll just make this hole on the side here give me two faces inset even offset and maybe this will work better if we bevel these edges because now that we have some extra edges because of the bevel we can get a slightly better shape so inset slide this inwards delete faces and this is not really the shape that i want i should have had a loop cut like this so i can slide this inwards and also these vertices over here so let's add another loop cut but now we gotta select all this geometry then deselect all the long edge loops and we gotta do loop tools space loop tools relax we gotta do the same thing on the outside over here and then we gotta slide some of these vertices to make sure that this stays round and now we can take these four faces inset delete slide this down slide this up and now we got a cuter hole here fill extrude inwards delete the face bevel this and we should be good to go thomas colin is probably gonna see this pinching here so we better take care of that now i think we're good but let's see if he's gonna approve this and now the model's more or less ready let's fill in these holes with some textures and normal maps I didn't feel like showing you this on camera so you can sit there and wonder how I did this. Only if you're a true fan of my channel, then you're going to know that I just showed you this in another video. And if you're not a true fan, then you better figure it out yourself. I'm going to turn this into a grid. We'll make it approximately this large. Give me a plane right here. Add a new material to the plane. Image texture node, new image, 512 by 512. We're going to name this grid. Blank, 32 bit float, okay, non-color. Select the grid, select the plane, go down to bake normal select it to active margin to now hit bake normally i give you a life lesson every time i bake a normal map but i'm not gonna say shit this time if you want a life lesson go follow me on twitter go follow me on instagram and go follow me on rumble save this image we're going to load this into paint net and we're going to make some more texture maps out of this texture i just finished a section where i'm teaching you guys about paint net in my ebook so whatever i'm about to show you it's going to be explained in there in a lot more detail it's almost fucking ready get the 20 percent discount before the update comes out there's gonna be over 100 new pages of content just about texturing materials and I'm also about to do a couple of videos where I'm going to teach you on video how to use PaintNet. So I'm going to give you a little bit of game for free as well. So make sure you subscribe to the fucking channel at least. Anyway, now we're going to duplicate this. Paint the holes black and the grid is going to be light gray. This is going to act as a specular map. So save this image separately. Now go back into Blender. We're going to add a new plane right here on top of this hole. Add a new material. Name that grid. Load up the normal map and load up the specular map. Run the normal map through a normal map node. Plug that shit up in your black color and we're going to plug the specular map into specular. Now, as you can see, the holes here are not shiny at all. And we can control this further with a brightness contrast node. I also want this to be metallic. And we can also use this image here to dictate the color. And you can control the color with a brightness contrast node as well. In the UV editor, we're going to scale up the UV map to make this more detailed. Now scale this thing down. Let's duplicate this so we can use another one for the other parts. Rotate this into place. Scale it up. Place it in here. And it looks like we're going to have to shape this a little bit better. So let's delete the plane. Give me this outline here and duplicate that. P to separate to new object. Face, grid fill. Now we got a much better shape. Apply the grid material to that. U unwrap. Scale up the UV map. And lower that into the hole like this. We're also going to rotate the UV map by 45 degrees. And this is almost exactly what we're looking for here. Do the same shit over here. Separate this. Face grid fill. Grid material. Unwrap. Adjust the UV map. And finally we're going to do the same thing on this hole over here in the front. We're going to take the vertices from the inside. And with Alt S we're going to deflate them to push them inwards. That's going to give me this curvy shape that I want in here. And now you can listen to your music when you're walking around. Ready to get chopped up with a fucking machete i'm gonna select this part new material name that chrome make that metallic reduce the roughness i don't want that on the entire headphone so i'll select the other part new material assign name that plastic and that's supposed to have very little roughness i'm gonna start a new canvas and paint net we have to make sure that this material is completely white here you can check that by looking at the hex code and we have to make sure that the background here is exactly the same color you can see the hex code and paint over here give me my text tool give me a light gray color type in l then type in r 
are make these bigger this should do in this plastic material i'm going to load up this image with the letters plug it into base color and now we're going to select a little surface down here you unwrap this looks like the right headphone so we're going to place this over the letter r select all the other geometry with control i scale down the uv map for that and throw it on some white area it looks like we forgot to make this thing over here but that should be very easy to create just give me this inset new material assign here make that black name it black plastic slide these vertices let's delete this surface so we can make a better shape here bring these closer and bring these closer as well now give me face grid fill inset a little bit with eye extrude this edge inwards delete the bottom bevel these edges now we're going to separate this to new object apply one level of subdivision surface that way we get more geometry here but that doesn't really work it works better without applying the subdivision surface modifier now we can make a circle here now give me that black plastic material after this is done give me a circle in here now i want the grid and now that's ready to fucking hell duplicate this headphone and on the second headphone we're going to adjust the uv map and place that over the letter L. Of course, this earbud has to be mirrored, which means we also gotta mirror the UV map. Now we got both earbuds, let's make the box. I'm about to show you the smartest thing that you've ever seen in a Blender tutorial. To make this case here, we have to form a hole in the shape of the earbuds, which means we gotta use the geometry from the earbuds to make the hole. Now, in the last video where we made some earbuds, we took some geometry from the bottom, we duplicated it, and this was the hole. We just created everything around it. Obviously, this is not gonna work this time. Instead, here's what we're gonna do. We know based on this image that when these earbuds are placed into the hole, the top of the hole is going to be approximately on this line something like this it don't gotta be exact but we're gonna get pretty damn close go to side view duplicate this earbud because we're about to completely fuck it up get me my knife tool with k start a cut right here press c to cut all the way through this object and then z to only cut along the z axis then bring it down here click hit enter and now we got an edge all the way around this headphone Control e mark seam now in face select mode we're going to select everything above this line x delete faces also get rid of all all this extra geometry here this now is the shape that we need for the hole we screwed up because this little part down here is supposed to be perpendicular to the cut so let's try again first we have to rotate this so that this stick is parallel with the y-axis to ensure that it's parallel we're first going to place the 3d cursor down here in the middle object set origin origin to 3d cursor snap that shit to the world origin duplicate this surface and with alt s we're going to push it downwards like this then select this vertex and this vertex and press f to fill now we get the this line down here which has to be perfectly aligned with the y-axis so we're going to carefully rotate while the 3d cursor is placed over here and the 3d cursor is the pivot point and now this is perfectly aligned with the world which means we should now be able to make a nice cut here so give me my knife tool we gotta cut somewhere at the bottom of this hole which will be somewhere around here so click x c click enter boom Control e mark seam and now we have a perfect shape for our hole we're just gonna have to connect this gap right here but first let's rotate this around the x-axis delete this geometry on the inside here we can even get rid of this now take these vertices fill give me two loop cuts down here fill this fill this fill this we're going to slide this in just to make this hole a little bit cuter and from top view we're also going to try to make this little a bit more round we can probably even get rid of this entire inner edge loop here and i think this should work quite well now we're going to take this outer edge loop extrude right click scale up let's instead try taking one segment at a time extrude this up straighten it out then extrude this to the right side straighten it out extrude this down and straighten it out let's close this extrude this straighten it out with the cursor over here we can slide this to the end extrude this again and bring it down here and finally take this over here straighten out and if we can now just select all the sharp edges we can go to n set the mean crease to one maybe it'll work better with a little bevel but we better clean up this nonsense because right now it looks kind of ugly and before you know it we got a great hole this is what we're going to use to store the headphone am i supposed to call them earphones now let's figure out which earbud is supposed to fit where let's snap this one here we're gonna try to rotate it into place like this it definitely ain't this one let's bring the other one over there add object constraint copy rotation and i want the rotation of this one here apply that rotate by 180 and then we just gotta adjust the position of this a little bit it's kind of hard to see which object is which here so let's go to solid view make sure you're in matcap 
cap and click on object right here go to object properties visibility not visibility viewport display and change the color to whatever do the same for this one over here make sure it's a different color now it's very easy to figure out where we got some clipping and we're probably gonna have to adjust this shape a little bit and before you know it we can mirror this we're gonna push it out a little bit like this select these two edge loops bridge edge loops and now let's add a couple of loop cuts here and there so that we can use loop tool space also on this side and now we can figure out a way to turn this into this oval shape that we're supposed to have here give me an empty circle let's say i want the shape of this box to be something like this so this will be the outline that i'm trying to follow in that case we're going to use one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two vertices to create this circle so place the 3d cursor between these two vertices on the ends here or rather in the middle of this circle and since we got 21 edges on this half we're gonna need a circle which has double that so give me a circle with 42 vertices place it right here join it with the object below right off the bat we're gonna delete one half of this circle and now we just gotta align these vertices with the vertices of the circle to do that we can just snap the 3d cursor to a vertex on the circle and snap the corresponding vertex of the surface below to the 3d cursor you're gonna have to make some adjustments to the inner geometry to prevent any twisting but before you know it you can just spam some keys and you're gonna get all the way around the circle as you can see, everything here matches reasonably well. Thomas Colin could definitely do this better than me, but this is good enough for me. It's gonna look good in the end anyway. Once again, let's delete half, mirror this to the other side. To accurately place the other earbud, first we gotta once again ensure that these have exactly the same rotation. So give me another copy rotation constraint. Target this, apply, and mirror. You're gonna know they're exactly in the same position if you see this flickering on the surface. Now select this edge loop, which outlines the hole where this earbud is already placed. Place the 3D cursor there, select the red earbud, and place its origin on the 3d cursor i don't know why we're bothering with all this man just place the cursor somewhere in the middle duplicate this earbud again mirror it to the other side adjust the uv map again and fuck it we're good to go now you can extrude this down give me an end gone right there bevel this as far as you can give me more segments loop cut right here bevel this we're going to extrude an edge from around these earbuds just because i think it looks cool it also looks like we fucked something up so it's going to be completely impossible to make a lid here which is going to perfectly fit with the top of these earbuds but it doesn't matter long as it looks cool we're gonna be fine so duplicate this dome bring it up here we're gonna do another knife cut on top here we should be able to create a decent hole up here as well and now let's extrude this out give me loop tools space right here loop tools relax we're going to try to adjust the shape of this curve so that it matches with the lid and before you know it we got a finished pair of headphones I've been sitting here for three hours modeling these fucking headphones. I don't feel like showing you all these other details anymore. I already did that in the last video where I made some earbuds. So if you got a problem with me skipping some parts, then fuck you, don't watch my videos. Luckily, most of my viewers are extremely intelligent, and anybody who follows me is definitely a lot smarter now than they were when they first started following me. So since you guys are so smart, I know you're gonna figure it out anyway. If not, you can always contact my community on Discord. They're always gonna be there to help you out. If you need some personal help with something you can join my patreon page you can message me i can even make a video about your specific situation so let me know if you need some help people tend to get very upset by some of the things i say in these videos so it's only a matter of time before i get banned off of youtube or something's gonna happen because people are gonna get offended and they're gonna start reporting me massively so follow me on instagram that's where i'm always in touch with my community i say a lot of crazy shit there so be ready also follow me on twitter where i say even crazier shit so be ready to have somebody tell you like it is on rumble i'm going to post videos about a bunch of other topics that's where i can talk about things which i can't talk about on youtube so if you got any topic that you want me to discuss whether it's self-improvement politics history or just arbitrary topics as you know i'm extremely intelligent and knowledgeable let me know and i can make some videos about that topic on rumble also check out the fucking ebook before it's too late you guys are not ready for this upcoming update I'm the only person on earth who doesn't use any paid add-ons. I don't use any paid programs. I show you how to do everything completely for free. So even if you're in Bangladesh and you're broke, even if you don't have any internet, you don't need fuck all to do things the way I do them. And you can make a bunch of money as a 3D artist. Well, if you're broke, then you probably can't buy my ebook, but then you can just watch my videos for free. There's an unbelievably vast collection of knowledge and wisdom on my YouTube channel. So subscribe to the channel, you'll be all right. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.